Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gamer Tedicom video, the specifications and performance of the GTX 980 Ti have been unveiled to the world. If you do want to see the leaked benchmarks, I will go through them verbally in this video, but if you do want to see the leaked benchmarks and you want to see the actual die diagram, then you can go ahead and click on the link in the video description. I do not want to include them because of the YouTube copyright monster. But anyway, getting back on to topic. So what do we actually have? What's the GPU um, actually pack? Well, the GM200-310, also known to its friends, colleagues, and uh, buddies, as the GTX 980 Ti, has 22 SMMs enabled. Now compare this to 24 of the Titan X. This means that you're having 2,816 CUDA cores compared to 3,072 for the Titan X. Now, why have NVIDIA done this? Is there a couple of reasons behind it? Or what? Well, there is a few good reasons, at least in my opinion. They've not come out and said it, but it's a good possibility that these are the reasons, So, if that made any sense. So the first reason to, is to do with the lineage of the Titan and its place in the market. Do a little bit of research on the original Titan line, in case you don't know much about it. And it was originally marketed to be a high-performance gaming card, which also had a good amount of compute performance. For example, people would use it for video rendering or compositing, or they might use it for 3D work, whatever the hell they needed it for. It was available, plus it could play a mean game of Half-Life 2. But, this line of Titans does not have that level of compute performance. They've... It's effectively just a gaming card, so the only thing that separates it from, let's say, the 980 is the number of CUDA cores it packs, as well as all the other uh, bits and bobs, like the number of ROPs and VRAM and all of that stuff. So, let's assume NVIDIA had done the 24SMM route with the GTX 980 Ti. Let's say they'd gone down that route and they'd said, hey, you know what, let's, let's put all of these in. Well, you're basically gobbling up a massive amount of the Titan X's uh, potential market because the main difference aside from that would have been the VRAM, which we'll get into in just a moment, but the VRAM would is only 6 gigabytes for the 980 Ti. But let's face it, unless you're playing a ridiculous resolution in the future with a ridiculous amount of cards in SLI, and most people aren't going to do that, you're not going to need 6 gigs of RAM anyway, and with the changes to the DirectX 12 specification and how memory is being utilized on um, DX12, it probably, and um, we're talking about for SLI or Crossfire, or in other words, dual cards here, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference anyway. In other words, 6 gigs for the foreseeable future, it's going to be perfect. By the time 6 gigs is over and done with, in other words, games are going to need more, who the hell is going to be running a 980 tie if you've got that kind of money to frequently throw about because you're going to upgrade fairly frequently right the next reason has to do with the cost of the cards and nvidia wanting to reduce the cost for themselves and possibly the customer so this has to do with what is known as speed binning and yields i won't go into the long story of this the short story is that when you manufacture a silicon they're usually part of a large wafer and let's say you have oh, I don't know, 100 in a wafer, and you might have, uh, these are pure numbers, I'm just pulling these out of my butt, I do not have NVIDIA's yields numbers, but you might have 10 out of 100, which have all SMMs capable, 24 SMMs enabled and functional, and can run at what NVIDIA like the Titan X to run it. So in other words, everything below that needs to be put into a separate card, a different card. So you've got quite a big difference between the 980 at the moment and the Titan X. So NVIDIA probably saying, hey, let's just split the difference and create the 980 Ti. It makes some sense. As I mentioned, the VRAM for the Titan X is 12 gigs, whereas this is only 6, which is more than enough. Memory bandwidth should still be the same, 336 gigabytes per second, but there is a bit of confusion and speculation that you're going to have a 970 memory 
issue. So in case you're not familiar with that, basically with the 970, 3.5 GB RAM at the full memory bandwidth, whereas you also had um, a few, um, sorry, 512 MB which didn't run at that clock speed and basically had significantly slower memory bus. So let's assume that a game hit 3.8 GB of memory usage, it would actually be a lot slower than if it was at 3.4 not because of you know the extra texture data necessarily, but because some of that data was going into the slower regions of memory. What some are expecting, and it's not confirmed yet, is the 980 Ti, if it goes over a certain VRAM usage, will hit the same problem. Luckily, fortunately, fortuitously, there's a lot more memory for the 980 Ti, so it could be maybe about 5.5 gigs, that's the estimate. I would also like to point out that it probably means we're also going to be getting considerably fewer ROPs, of course, fewer TMUs and all of the other bits and bobs that you'd expect um, compared to that of the um, compared to that of the Titan. But there is some good news. I'm just going to read out the Fire Strike performance, not the Fire Strike Extreme or the Ultra, but the 980 Ti is actually getting around the 20,000 mark, 20,021 to be precise, compared to the Titan X's 17,396. I'll grant you that that is overclocking the tie, but even under clock, but even just the standard clock speed, it's still getting around 17,000. In other words, there's very little difference between it and the Titan X. What I'm hearing, the reasoning behind this is because of massively more aggressive boost clocks, which is possible because maybe the fact that A, you're running fewer SM SMMs, and second reason, that you've also got the benefit of the fact that manufacturers can use their own PCBs plus their own cooling systems. So if EVGA want to you know, ship a truckload of liquid, um, oh, I don't know, nitrogen, let's go with, on uh, you know on top of your card and obviously this is ridiculous but i'm just saying they could technically do it they're, they're allowed to whereas at the moment they must adhere very strictly with nvidia's cooling policies which means effectively a lot of the titan exits for all intents and purposes unless you get really lucky in the silicon lottery they're all going to clock about the same or of course you could uh change the cooler yourself so What's the card going to be like? Well, as I said, it's going to be effectively slightly below that of the Titan X. So pretty much everything is in the natural order of things. It will be considerably cheaper. I'm not massively excited about the 980 tie, to be honest. It's pretty much as and when. Uh, the Maxwell range hasn't really lit my fire, um, to be totally honest. I, I'm not saying it's a bad series of cards, but it's it's more of a... A subtle improvement over the Kepler architecture. It wasn't like a radical redesign. It's not a massive shift, like let's say, going from the 7800 series to the 8800 series back in the day. Now it's it's been a lot more subtle. Obviously, when Nvidia do finally unveil their Pascal architecture to the world, things will be considerably different. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.